One of the unique features of mobile applications is location awareness. Mobile users take their devices with them everywhere, and adding location awareness to your app offers users a more engaging experience. My name is Colt McCandless, and while all this fancy location data is making your app more useful, misusing it can cost you big with respect to battery life. Now, a standard location request looks uh, a little something like this, and uh, in the name of performance, let's take a look at those first two values, namely uh, the interval APIs. Set interval sets the rate in milliseconds at which your app prefers to receive location updates. The uh, lower the number and the more updates you get, and of course the more better you burn up as a result. Which means finding the right value to use for your interval is an important balance. Uh, too fast and you'll be burning through lots of battery for the GPS requests. Too slow and your application won't be updating fast enough to be helpful to the user. <laughs> But really, you want to end up in a situation where you can be a bit more dynamic with how you interact with this hardware. Uh, for example, if you notice that the position has stayed the same for a while, then there's a good chance that the user may be stationary for a long duration. So uh, try backing off the sampling interval to reduce the amount of battery churn that comes with that process. But it's also worth pointing out that other apps also affect the rate in which updates are sent to your application. Uh, in fact, the underlying system will send out updates at the fastest rate that any application has requested with the set interval API across the whole system, meaning that your app can end up receiving location events at a faster frequency than the one requested by your app, perhaps flooding you with location information and doing a lot of other stuff you don't actually need to do. Which is why the set fastest interval API is used. Uh, basically, this lets you throttle how often you get updates that you might not be interested in or ready for, so your app isn't wasting time updating and processing location events when they're not actually being needed. Now, uh, let's take a look at the whole uh, set priority thing. You have to remember that the dominant way your device resolves its physical location on Earth is with the help of a global positioning system hardware. Uh, basically, there's a cascade of satellites hanging out uh, just right outside of Earth's atmosphere whose whole job is to communicate positional information to your device based upon your movements. Uh, simply, the GPS hardware in your phone negotiates signals between the satellites and tower data to pinpoint your position in space and time, which, as you might imagine, is a very battery-intensive operation. But this isn't the only way you can get location data. Uh, besides the super expensive GPS, there's also the network provider which determines location based upon availability of cell tower and Wi-Fi access points. Uh, the result is that less accurate results are given to you, but only a portion of the battery is used compared to the GPS version. Uh, and of course there's the passive provider, which is probably the most battery efficient. Uh, when some other application makes location requests, the results then get passed along to your app as well. That Way, your device isn't sending out multiple location pings and can spend more time saving battery. Now, in order to make all of this more accessible for your location API needs, you can control what types of networking and battering drain you're wanting by using the set priority option of a location request. And uh, if you're already using activity recognition to determine what the uh, device or app is doing or when it's not being used, you can leverage this data to turn off location request queries or throttle them back when they're not needed. But in truth, balancing and bouncing all of those APIs depending on the state is a really cumbersome process, which is why Android has made it a lot easier. By using the Fused Location Provider API, you get a simplified interface to all of this craziness, and Android will handle all the grungy details on your behalf, saving you both battery as well as sanity in your code base. Now, if you're ever confused about how your application is eating through battery, always be sure to take a hard look at the Battery Historian tool. It will happily remind you of all the things you're doing wrong and give you hints on how to get them fixed. So, don't get lost in the world of battery performance. Make sure you check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns videos and join our Google Plus community to ask questions from other great performance experts. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.